did my video the other day and I totally forgot to talk about my biggest fish in this tank, which is the single male Brycinus longipinus or Brycanolestes longipinus. Common name is usually longfin tetra or Alestis tetra. Super cool. Definitely the largest fish. They can get about five inches long. And this is a male. You could see the, sort of see, yeah, the dorsal fin has long fin extensions. So the reason I only have one is I had half a dozen of them and I lost the rest of them to gas bubble disease, which is a pretty gruesome thing that can happen. Uh, if you use like a python, to do water directly from your tap into your tank. Super saturation of gases in your tap water from the pressurized water, uh, especially if the water is colder than the water in the fish tank. Anytime you do a water change, if you get lots of little gas bubbles on the glass or on the plants or even on the fish, that is definitely a sign of um, super saturation of gases. And in this case, if it's really bad, it can cause like embolisms, I think, in fish. Um, it's, it's pretty horrific. And large tetras, especially tetras in general, but large tetras, large Congo tetras, seem especially susceptible to it. And before I realized what was happening, I used to use a python uh, and, you know, it's very hard to control the temperature of the tap water. You know, in some houses, it, it's too cold, it's too hot. You go back and forth trying to get it just right. And sometimes it, it cools down a little bit. So I did a water change. The water was a bit colder. One thing that can impact it also is if the, if the hose that you're putting the water into isn't splashing on the surface, which breaks up the gases. If it gets below the surface of the water, that makes it worse too. So anyway, so this uh, gas bubble disease happened. And in some of the fishes, it was nearly instant. They started thrashing around, um, flopping over on their sides, just violently thrashing and were dead within minutes. Some of them, you know, lasted a day, but they still died. And I lost all five of the other uh, Alestis tetras. This is the only survivor. And I had a bunch of other, I had Congo Tetras and Yellowtail Congo Tetras, and I lost many of them as well. I almost wish I videoed it because it was so horrible. And pe people often, you know, pythons are very popular. So I mention it online, on forums, on Facebook, and people don't really want to hear it. So I almost wish I had recorded it to show you how horrible it can be. And it's not going to happen every time. It might have to do with how your water is delivered to your house. Um, the time of year, the temperature of the water, and other factors. So it's not always going to happen. I used it for years without a problem, but everyone's, I did have a few other incidents, which I think might have been, it might have been what killed some fish after a water change and just didn't realize it. So anyway, this is the sole survivor. I've had him for, I think, four or five years. I would get more, but as I mentioned in the other video, this tank is already overpopulated and I wanted to go with some of the more rare, hard to find um, African touches. And these guys now definitely are more common. Um, I could get them all the time from the wet spot in Portland, pretty much. So, and I've kept them before. They used to be very, very rare. Back in the 80s when I was in college, I had a tank, 55 gallon in my apartment. Uh, with some Congo touches and I had three of these guys. And back then, that was the only time I'd ever seen them for sale. And so I grabbed them and loved them. So anyway, that is the guy I forgot the other day and the story behind why there's only one. So I wanted to show the little fantastic guys that I talked about the other day. I just noticed today that some of them have, are starting to already color up. Yeah, like that guy, see his the anal fin is already really orange. So I think just a result of being in this larger tank, uh, they are starting to show their colors. So it might be sooner than I thought as they start growing. 
So it's probably, I'm assuming that's a male because a few of them have it and a few of them don't. The males I think are also gonna have the black finish, uh, fin extensions in the center of their tails. And I'm assuming the females won't. They're very similar otherwise in I think size and um, color pattern, not not color, but to these um, lamp congos, the Phenicogrammus aurantiacus. Um, except they're gonna be sort of orange and um, olive and or red and olive instead of the gold and olive. Um, so yeah, looking forward to them getting nicer and nicer. One cool thing about the, I can't get good, yeah, there we go. Cool thing about the Phenicogrammus aurantiacus, the lamp congos, is the females are just as colorful as the males. That's actually my only male out of 11 fish. And you can tell he's a male because he has the fin extensions on his dorsal fin. The females don't have that, but otherwise they are beautiful. Their colors are just as bright, if not even a little brighter, because their gold coloration goes the full length of their body. Uh, so that's a nice thing about them compared to regular Congo touches where the females are relatively dull compared to the males. And then some of the other ones, yellow tail, Congo touches, and these um, these red Congo touches, the females are completely um, almost colorless and not very exciting. So anyway, I think that is it for today. I've already gone on long enough, but yeah. If you like this video, maybe I'll do more talking in the future. Uh, all right.